we can do for kid children is to read aloud to them. Just looking at the pictures, telling the story from the pictures. We have uh, audio files on our website. You can see them more in our Pashto, Dari, and Urdu languages, but we have English only there, also there. And so the audio file, you can listen to the book and it has a little bell for um, page turning. So it can be read aloud to you and then you can read through the story and listen to it. That, that, that's that's awesome. weird too. Yeah. I, I knew that some of the stories have, were translated and available in, in other languages, but I didn't know there was audio files. We're using those with our Afghan refugees. <clears throat> and, and many, most of the Afghan refugees that are coming here, I don't know about in Canada, but um, a majority of them are not, are not literate in at reading in their own languages. They have not gone to school. How comforting for those um, who are coming to a different country who are from Afghanistan and hearing their stories. I don't know if you can see this. This is Pashto. And even if they can't read, just that familiarity of seeing words that they've seen. We're becoming more and more self-aware, I guess, of how Eurocentric, how colonialism has shaped how we treat other people, how we understand ourselves, and how we understand others. It's not something that um, we're proud of. <laughs> and so lots of parents, lots of educators are really looking for ways in which they can use resources and they can think differently and they can, they can have an influence on what their children um, are being exposed to and thinking about and how they are seeing other cultures and other ethnicities in ways that show pride. We've talked about how these books really, really speak to those who are from Afghanistan mm -hmm. and who may be in Afghanistan, maybe mm -hmm. in, in the United States or other, other places. But what about for those who are not from Afghanistan? How do you see these books supporting children's understanding of inclusion, belonging, um, diversity? Well, I, I think one of the things are the drawings. We have m most of the stories, except for a couple, um, the, 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 the clothing that the, the people are wearing, the women, the children are wearing traditional dress. And so that's, you know, that's something that's not familiar. They don't look quite the way um, American children or Canadian children expect people to look. So that kind of helps. But I think also, you know, Shaw talked a lot about how we were very good in the West at kind of speeding up, at doing things quickly, at having things really, you know, kind of happen at a certain pace, and that the East could teach us about slowing down. And I think that that is something, I think COVID, in, in a way, COVID's been a gift in that way too. It has slowed us down. I and mean, there's certainly been so many negative things for educators and for children with COVID, but it has slowed us down. It has given us a little pause. Everything is kind of just not quite at that same breakneck pace. We had a course for preschool teachers and we gave them six books. For, their, all the, for all their children. And they came for six weeks and each week we did a different title. One teacher in particular came to the first class and she said, oh, my children will never be able to sit still for this much text for my preschool kids, my three-year-olds. It's just gonna be too much text and the words are too big and it's too involved and it's not gonna happen. You know, it's not gonna happen. So, okay, well, you're getting six books. so." She showed up for six weeks, you know, she was going to come because she was getting the book. And we decided we weren't going to try to tell her anything. We're going to let her experience what happened. And by the fourth or fifth class, that teacher was sold. I mean, she said her kids were sitting there with the books open, reading with her. They were just devouring the stories. They were just so engaged. They enjoyed them so much. And she com had completely changed her perception. That for me, that was also true. It's an, and sometimes the teacher will say, well, there's something missing in this book, you know, because it doesn't have that emotional piece. It doesn't have the fear piece. It doesn't have the wolf. It doesn't have the dragon. Or if it does, it's, it's cooperative rather than, you know, kind of combative. And so there, it's, there's a, it's a different way of knowing and seeing. 
and it takes a while. I think we think of stories as being entertaining. We think they're cute. We think they're for children. We, we have this preconceived idea of what they're about based on our, our Western concept of what is worthy. And once we move our, our kind of our gaze a little bit and our thinking, I think we get a, a better taste of what Eastern culture has to offer us. And, um, and I mean, for me, that's been the, the big piece. And, I, and I've seen it with teachers because I've, I've had the privilege to work with so many wonderful teachers. For parents and, and educators who might think, our world is changing really, really fast. It's all about um, keeping up with digital changes. What, what would you say to a, a parent or educator saying, I'm not sure these stories are current enough or relevant enough for today's child? Well, I, I think quite the contrary, the elements in the story and the characters in the story are universal and that doesn't change. When Cher the lion goes around growling and the other animals don't understand what he has to say, and when some of the animals run away, they all run away. And Cher just doesn't understand. He's, he's just grrrr. That's how lions talk. That's all he can say. But when some of the animals hear that, they are frightened and they run away from him. And I had a little three-year-old boy in Washington, D.C. At the end of the story, he says, I know how Cher feels. I don't speak very good English. And when some of the hear kids hear me talk, they laugh at me and they won't play with me. So here's a three-year-old making an analogy between Cher the Lion's situation and his own. And that was a perfect opportunity for the teacher to sit down and talk about otherness. I mean, we are, that's something we're experiencing more now than we ever have in our history. And so to be able to build that empathetic piece where we can all sit around as three-year-olds or 40 year olds or whatever age and talk about you know how we can bridge this gap because we are one we are becoming one community in the world so there the situations are so universal that happen in these stories you know and mm -hmm. um, and then with all of this speeding up that you're talking about children need the calming right they need the quiet they need your undivided attention even if it's just a 20 minute story before they go to bed or you know nap time or whatever i mean it's just it's critical for them because their sense of time is very different from from ours